Let's jump over to define our function called uh, process gas. In this function, we're gonna we expect that it's going to return true or false. So I'm gonna say return type is bool boolean, and then we're gonna say it's process gas, and then we're gonna say um, let's call it the answer and uh, the guess. Now over here, because we're passing in um, C strings and we are not going to change those C strings. So there's a way to do that to guarantee that we don't accidentally change things is by putting in a keyword called constant over here. So we're gonna call it constant the answer. We're going to say, okay, I'm gonna have another thing, constant uh, the guess. Right. So over here, we are going to two, do two passes. First, we mark all the exact matches with the letter G, uh, which stands for green. And then secondly, we're going to mark those that are not in the correct position with Y, which stands for yellow. And the rest are going to be the default, which is like a hyphen. Now, since there are two passes altogether, we need a way to keep a record of the clue. So this is uh, what we're going to do. We are going to create um, the record of the clue. So let's say the clue. So we're going to create a static um, array clue and then we need um, six of them the reason why you need six of them is it is also going to represent uh, be represented as a C string so I'm going to have that over here now so uh, what I'm going to put in the clue so when we start there's no clue so everything is just the default um, this little hyphen thing so I'm going to do a bunch of hyphening and I'm going to do one more and do one more. All right, so we have five of them. And to make it into a C string, we're going to add in a special character, which is this slash zero character. Now, we also need a set of flags to indicate that if a letter in the answer is being used to generate a clue. This actually allows us to solve the issue that we had in the Python version, which was pointed out by one of the commenter. So to do that, we are going to create another um, Let's, let's give it a name. Let's uh, describe it. It's basically a set of flags indicating if that letter in the answer is used as clue. Right, so we're going to use the Boolean type and we're going to, let's call it answer flags. Okay, so it's going to be um, five of them. We're not creating a C string, so we don't really need that special character and then we are going to um, set it as all false. The reason why is because when we start, all of these um, clues are not being made, so none of the letters are being used uh, to generate a clue. So that's why we start with false. Later on, we'll change some of them into true, and you'll see what happens and why that's ha happened that way. Now, let's start with our first pass. So let's do our first pass. So our first pass is to look for exact matches right? so we're going to use a for loop for loop int i equals to zero start with the zero index and then make sure that it doesn't go beyond five letters and then we're gonna increment the index by one every time we repeat so over here we'll say if the guess and then we'll check in the i position is equal to the answer in the i position as well. Now, if that is the case, we are going to set the clue. So to set the clue the, for the corresponding location is going to be now G, right? Now, because we have the answer flags, we also want to indicate that this particular location, this word or this letter in this uh, answer word is also being, is already being used as a clue. So we're gonna say answer flags. And then it is true. So set it to true. Oops, sorry that. So this is uh, our first pass. So our second pass, what does the second pass do? The second pass, we look for those that are there, but elsewhere. So it's like um, it is in the word, the letter, but it's in the incorrect position. So we're going to scan the whole thing again. And to do that, we're going to use another for loop. Since it's a separate follow-up, we can reuse our um, iterator uh, character. Uh, see, sorry, the um, iterator i, and then we're going to do the same thing. Make sure that it doesn't go beyond the five letters, and then we're going to advance one at a time. All right. 
inside what we're going to do is that we want to do a scan but then if it will only it will only need to update our clue when the clue is not not already being uh, been made so this is why we're going to say if clue in this particular location is equal to a dash it means that the clue has not been generated i mean it's not being used so i'm gonna do the following right so to make it a little bit clear usually i will type a, a comment here means no except match from first pass so you probably know what why this is the case right So the next thing is, if that's the case, I'm going to do the following. I'm going to check again each of the characters in the answer and see if they, at least this character in the guess, uh, sorry, this letter in this guess actually match elsewhere. So I'm going to check, use another for loop over here. And since it is within another for loop, I need to use another iterator variable. So let's say j, j, j again, cannot be more than five. And then I'm going to advance it one by each time. Now over here, I'm going to do the following. I'm going to check if it is a match. So if the guess i equals to the answer. Now that should give us some clue, right? But there's one more thing we need to check because if it has already been used to generate a clue, we shouldn't be using it to generate another clue. So that's why we use the answer flag flags j to make sure that you don't actually accidentally do that sorry about that this should be j over here as well because you're checking each character at a time uh, from the answer now if this is the case what it means is that uh, we should actually generate a clue so in this case it will be a match at another location or position and has not been used as clue right so we're going to use the clue or create a clue, update the clue to Y, yellow. And we are going to um, set the answers flag to uh, true as well. Because now we have used that to generate uh, the clue. Now there's one more thing we need to do because if there are more, um, more letters and the rest of our answer that has you know, a match, then this particular instance of j, uh, sorry, uh, of this i, we will generate yet another clue of y over there. And we don't want that because we do only want to generate one clue at a time. So we are going to use a very special keyword here in C, or in a lot of programming, langu programming languages called break, um, which essentially stops that for loop, the closest for loop from repeating. Now, um, normally I don't recommend my students to uh, use break because this really literally breaks uh, the flow of the, of the loop. But if you know exactly what you're doing and if you provide enough comments over there, then actually it's a very helpful tool. So uh, I'm just gonna make sure that, you know, this is well documented. So I'm say this J loop because we don't want multiple clues from the same letter. There's, there are actually other ways to avoid using break, but for the simplicity, uh, sake of simplicity, I'm just going to uh, keep it here. Now, so once we're done with this, let's make sure that our, our uh, brackets are being done. So this should be a semicolon. Uh, make sure that our brackets are, are balanced out. So we reach the end of this function. So what we want to do is we're gonna print the um, clue. So I'm going to say print in this format and add an end of line character over here and then a new line character here and then we'll print out the clue. Right. Next, we're going to return like whether there's a match, uh, whether the guess has been done correctly. So we're going to say return something. What we're going to check is whether the clue is uh, having all the letters being set to G. So G, 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 G means that everything is a exact match. So we're going to use a very interesting or like a default um, comparis comparator of uh, strings called string compare, which is why we have a library called string over here because it's defined over there. So we're going to provide it with uh, two things, the clue, which is what we have, and also the target string, so this guy. 
Now, very interestingly, uh, in C, when you call a string compare, if they actually are match, it will actually return the value zero over here, uh, which means that there's no difference between these two strings. Um, but if you simply just return zero, uh, in C, it actually treats it as false, which is kind of the opposite of what we want. So we're gonna check if it is actually zero. So if match, string compare, just to help us to understand it better, uh, return zero. But otherwise, if it is uh, not a match, it will return a non-zero number. Right. So with this one, we are basically done with our uh, process guess. The next thing we want to do is we want to um, print the results. Uh, there are two cases, again, where the loop, uh, while loop will end. One, the player uses up all the six guesses, or the player guesses correctly before they run out of the guesses. So here we are going to use the guess guessed correctly as a way to dis, um, display the correct message. So I'm going to say display um, display end of game message. Okay. So if oops, guessed correctly, then you're going to print the you know congratulations blah blah blah. So I'm going to say print f. say congratulations you guess the correct word in format digit or number times so it's about and end of line or new line and then we're gonna say well print number of guesses over here okay now otherwise then uh, else it means that uh, the guess has not been done correctly and that uh, the number of guesses are being used up. So we can say print f, you have used up your guesses, dot, dot, dot. the correct word is. So we provide at least the answer over here and we're going to say answer, which is where it's being stored. All right. Now, so that's pretty much what we have. But before we can call it done for a program, we need to do a cleanup. So this is something that uh, is unique to see because when we, we have what we have done is we have allocated or request some memories using malloc or C alloc, right? So we actually need to do some cleanup by ourselves uh, manually. So what we need to do is we need to make sure that all the memory that we requested or uh, allocated has been freed. So remember that one of the things that we have is the word list. So we have word count number of words. So what we want to do is we're going to use a for loop uh, equal to zero, i uh, smaller than word count, and uh, increment by one. So over here, we are going to free, use the call of function free, and then word lists at that location. Now, once we are done, we're going to free up that entire array. So we're going to free up words list. Okay. Now, remember that we actually have a few more things we actually have done. So we have created every time when we load in the word, we create this like five letter word. At the last one, we will have a five letter word that is not being used. So we're going to say free the five letter word. And last but not least, we also use some memory to store the guess of the user. So we're going to make sure that the guess is also done. Uh, one more thing I almost forgot is um, I think I should close the file, right? So we're done. We'll say F close. And then we'll say uh, close the word file. So make sure that the file is closed properly and uh, we can uh, use it for some other purposes. So that's basically what we have. So let's uh, give it a run to see if it is uh, <laughs> uh, bug free or at least it compiles. So yeah, it, it compiles and run, looks great. And we are going to do some guesses. We're gonna say, say magic. Right, so I've got magic, there's one word A, uh, we don't know what this is. So let's say, um, and it's not in the right position, so awake, let's say. Oh, that, uh, that's great. I actually have guessed it correctly, that's great. Now, of course, it's not really helpful. Uh, let's um, do a little bit of uh, checking. So let's go to here 
and uh, we changed the first word to allow, which is uh, the comment that left uh, was left in the previous video. So um, to make it easier, we are not going to use random. We are going to use the first one. So this is always going to be allow, and we're going to run the code. Right, and um, what happened in the previous video was that when we use uh, type Lily, so the answer was allow and we type uh, the guess as Lily, there, is, there are more L's than the answer has. So the issue that we had previously was that um, because we have more guesses, guessed letter, it, each of them generates a clue, which we don't want. Instead, we want it to generate exactly two clues uh, from the answer. So that's why we have this um, flags and clue and two passes. Now, as you can see now, it uh, correctly or properly generates the number of things uh, based on the answer. So you see there are only two L's being used to generate the clue. So of course, the um, the third L over here is a match, is a direct match, and the first L is not because allow does not have the L at the front. Okay, so let's just uh, get it done. So let's just uh, be stubborn and then just, I, I always think that it's Lily. So let's just Lily, Lily. Lily, Lily, Lily. Okay, so uh, I just make what, six guesses and I use up for my guesses and it's telling me that the correct word is allow. Right, so this is um, if I ended up finishing the for loop, but then, uh, sorry, the while loop, but then it's not because I made the guess correctly. So here we are, a text based version of the famous Wordle game, and we have created it in about 20 minutes. To make it work, we have used a few coding constructs like file IO, console IO, while loop, function, for loop, and if statements. We've also used memory allocation, which is a coding construct unique to C and C++ that allows us to handle program memory space directly. And believe it or not, many programs are created using these constructs as well. I hope you learned something useful in this video. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. Hope to see you again soon. Bye.